Hi everybody, Shane R. Monroe here with Monroe World, and I have been asked to do a tutorial on how to get a hard drive-based game that comes from an LHA or an LZX file and get it into Amiga Forever and use it inside of the appropriate operating system. So I actually have a good use case here, and we're going to go through the whole thing, top to bottom, and we'll show you exactly how to make it work. So let's start off by looking at the title that we're going to be doing today. It's called OIDS. It's a port from an Atari ST game. So we're going to download that title, and as you can see, it's an LZX file. I've already created a folder on my C drive called Amiga. I'm just going to dump it in there. And then I am going to see that the file is indeed in there. Now, um, it says that WinRAR will open it, but it will not. Um, LHAs will open here, but LZXs, which are like compressed LHA files, you'll need a special tool. It can be found from here. The LZX most powerful, none more powerful archiver. And if you scroll down the page, you will find a version for Windows 95, which of course is LHA, <laughs> which cracks me up. But we'll go ahead and download that too. We'll also put that in the Amiga folder. Now, this guy uh, does get recognized by Amiga Forever, but we're not going to use Amiga Forever. We're going to right-click. We're going to extract it using uh, WinRAR. You can use whatever other utilities maybe that you have that work with LHAs. My guess is WinRAR is going to be what you got. So we're going to extract that, and we are going to move that OIDS folder into that. Then we're going to drag OIDS onto the UnLZX, and we're going to go ahead and give it permission. That will extract that file and give us a folder. And these are Amiga files, which is great. So let's go ahead and move that OIDS folder back into Amiga. All right, at this point in time, we can get rid of uh, these other files. We don't need those. And so now we have C Amiga OIDS. And inside OIDS, we have a bunch of uh, odd-looking files, which we are we do know are Amiga files. So now that we've got the, the folder out, we're going to mount that inside of one of these virtual operating systems inside of Amiga Forever. Now, you could start with, say, the Amiga 2000 or the 3000. It all depends on what level of operating system that particular title needs. I've already been through this exercise, so I happen to know that it does require Workbench 3.1 to work. Anything that's more modern, anything that happened after the Amiga's lifespan probably needs 3.1. Otherwise, I would use Workbench 1.3's hard drive version here. You can see I've got a clone of it already. Go ahead and right click and make a copy of your Workbench 3.1. Right click that and go to edit. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to mount that folder as a hard drive on the virtual Amiga. It's pretty easy. Go to medium. All right, so you can see that we have three hard drives already mounted here. We're going to add another one. The type is going to be a directory. And the directory we're going to add is this... Um, the directory we're going to add is that Amiga folder. We're going to start there. And we're going to open that OIDS folder and select it. So C Amiga OIDS. Easy enough. Whatever you made the folder. We're going to leave everything else defaulted. So now we have a new DH3 or disk hard drive number 3. And it's got the contents of the OIDS folder in it. And it is read-writable. We didn't change anything else. We're going to hit OK. So now our copy, you could rename this to Workbench 3.1 OIDS if you wanted to. In fact, let's do that. Why not? Perfect. Now we know what it's for. We're going to go ahead and run that. And this is going to launch us into a standard Amiga Workbench 3.1 operating system, all pre-configured, by the way, by the Amiga Forever package. This is really great. Setting up your own full-blown hard drive package is a real pain. So this is really cool that this is built in. Ah, look at this. Here are all those drives we were talking about, including the elusive OIDs. We're going to open up OIDs. And wow, there's not a, there's no, um, <laughs> there's no for sure which one we're supposed to use here. But uh, you can pretty much guess a lib file or an image file or PLN file is probably not what you're looking for. It's probably this guy, even though there's no icon. Most of these titles will have an icon or something that is pretty obvious what it is you're supposed to launch it with. In this case, there's not. So we're going to go ahead and run that. It's going to say enter any sort of command line arguments. We have none. And there it is. Whoa, look at that. It's there and it works. So cool. And now you're back into standard Amiga emulation, just like you normally would be. 
Um, so it looks like we can do this. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to pick one. And I have no idea if this is a mouse game or what. But Or if it's a controller. Don't know. That will depend, of course, on the game itself <laughs> that you're playing, I'm sure. All right. Um, so I'm not, not sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Is this a mouse game? We're going to find out. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Let me see. Oh, there's some controls. Uh, fire button. Let's see. That didn't work out. That didn't work out at all. So you would have to, of course, go through and configure this. Um, so you would probably want to configure yourself a joystick um, or change the emulation device. I imagine most Amiga games do work off of a joystick. I don't have one plugged in and working right now. But you can see that the game definitely works. You can try to hit escape or something else to get out of it. In this case, it looks like escape pauses. Oh, here we go. So I hit Q. I exited the game. Can I get out of here? Q again. Hmm. So that's sort of the interesting thing is how do you get out of here once you're in it? And that, of course, will vary from game to game unless there's an exit here somewhere. Editor menu, change keys. Hard to say. But in any event, you can, of course, always escape yourself out of the emulation package. We didn't commit any changes because we didn't do anything really to um, we didn't do anything to the hard drive image files that are on here. All we did was add another folder that had the files to simulate another hard drive. So we don't really have any changes to commit, so we're good to leave. And then, of course, the next time you run, you'll be uh, right back where we started from earlier, which will be. Um, which will be launching Workbench. Now, if that game were to have saved a file, or there was some sort of settings, or, or any sort of save file, when you exited the emulator, it would ask you if you wanted to commit those back, and you would probably want to do that. That's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This works for a ton of different things. Uh, ADF files are a lot easier. You just mount them, and you boot off of them. In this case, though, it was a little more difficult. We had to Not only did we have to find a hard drive solution, but we also... Um, had to do uh, some other weird extraction with an oddball uh, Amiga type archiver. So that's it. I hope you enjoy the video. Please like, subscribe, do check out those other Deluxe Galaga videos I've recently posted. You'll probably like those as well. I'm Shane Armonroe, and as always, thanks so much for watching. Take care.